Welcome to the Content Amplified Podcast, brought to you by Masset. Our goal is to help you get more from your marketing content. Each episode is a 10 to 15 minute interview with industry experts that share amazing insights to help you squeeze as much juice from your content as you possibly can. Here's today's interview. Welcome back to another episode of Content Amplified. Today, I'm joined by Claire. Claire, welcome to the show. Hi, Ben. Thanks for having me. Excited to have you on the show. Before we dive into the subject and the topic for the day, let's get to know you a little bit about your career and background. And also, I'd love to ask what you love about content and marketing. Yeah, sure. So I'm Claire Hastwell, and I lead the content marketing strategy at Great Place to Work. I really started my marketing career working in the arts and for nonprofits. And then I had a short stint working for Yelp. And that really helped me hone my writing skills, which really helped me through my content marketing career. So after my stint at Yelp, I worked for the Museum of Contemporary Art in Sydney, Australia, where I led the uh, digital marketing campaigns there. And then I worked for the city of Sydney, where I led the promotions of the cultural and environmental programs for the local government area in Sydney, Australia. And that was really where marketing started to shift and have a big focus on content. We created a lot of content, like advice content for local residents in social and email and um, video. And so the through line throughout my whole career has really been content and culture, whether it's been the arts or psychology. And that's really what led me to um, Great Place to Work. So Great Place to Work is the global authority on company culture. And if you haven't heard of Great Place to Work, maybe you've heard of the Fortune 100 best companies to work for. So Great Place to Work is the data scientist behind that list, as well as many other best workplaces lists. And so we help employers measure and improve their employee experience so that they can create a great culture for everyone and also get recognized for that culture. So um, I take all the amazing insights we have from all the um, data we collect on the employee experience and turn those insights into advice and service content for CHROs and people leaders. Yeah, and why I love content marketing, I feel like it's the fun part of marketing And I like that it's really about adding value either through education or entertainment rather than just cold selling. And I like that it's about building trust and like a long term sort of relationship with your with the customer. That's great. So today we're going to talk about a subject that I think a lot of people are excited to do, but they may not know where to get started or how to grow this area of their business. And that's really consumer research. And how we can do consumer research to reveal content opportunities that may not otherwise be really visible and really discover the best things to produce for our our clients and and customers and, and market. First off, why is consumer research so important specifically for content? What what's your why when you think about consumer research in that space? Well, I think it's very easy to make assumptions about what our audiences want um, and what they're thinking. And by doing consumer research, it really keeps you focused on the here and now. Um, And also things change. I mean, we saw through um, COVID, like all of a sudden people wanted sourdough starter. And the only way that you can understand what your customers want right now is by doing the research. And I think it's really critical for finding topics um, for content that are both important and urgent, but maybe not widely discussed. And it enables you to have more empathy with your audience or your um, your readers. Like for example, have you ever read an article where it's just made you feel so seen because you're like, this is exactly what I was thinking. So that's my goal is to mm. um, to basically create content that makes people feel like their pain points are really recognized. And also it just helps you stop wasting your time on things that aren't resonating with your audience. I love that. And when you mentioned the article, I was thinking immediately every single parenting article where they're like, (laughs) oh, my kid struggles with this. I'm like, oh, it's not just me. Thank you. Like, I'm so interested in this conversation. That's a really cool standard for saying, this is when you've hit the mark when someone's like, I feel heard. 
Mm-hmm. I feel seen. And I think that that's a great standard. I love that. All right. I'm convinced. I've got to do consumer research for my content. What do I actually do to collect that consumer research? What's the how in this whole process and how can I get better at it? I have a few um, different kind of scrappy but very effective ways to get those insights on your consumer. So the first one would be to stay really close to your customer success or sales team or both. So something that I like to do is regularly um, shadow sales call where customers or prospects are literally talking through their pain points on those calls and also even the language that they use. So I shadowed a sales call a while back and I found that our prospects weren't referring to our best workplaces list as company awards, but as employer of choice awards. So Just that simple change, I started to incorporate employer of choice into our marketing messaging and customer success. So we have a really great customer success at Great Place to Work. They work with our customers to um, improve how they're surveying their employees and help them get on the list. And we also have culture coaches who are coaching our customers through their um the pain points they have around the employee experience and improving culture. My advice is to to have like a really good relationship with people on your sales and customer success team because they have their finger on the pulse of what's happening and keep those lines of communication open. And this was really successful for us back in yeah, 2020, like April 2020, where um people all of a sudden were freaking out because everyone was working from home all of a sudden and people wanted to know how to survey their employees during COVID. So we actually created a blog post, how to survey your employees during COVID, because one of the the product solutions we have is um, employee surveys. That blog post got so much organic traffic and we had so many um, marketing qualified leads through that because we were yeah listening to our customers through our customer success team. The other tip I have is to get into the comments. So something I also love to do is read comments in LinkedIn posts, which are um, related to your target audience, or LinkedIn groups, Facebook groups, Reddit, and also the comments on articles. So another example I have, there was an article that the New York Times published on um, on menopause, which is a topic that's not widely discussed, and it's also um, very much um, misrepresented. And I was reading the comments about all these women who had 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 to leave their jobs because they had these crippling um, menopausal symptoms and they didn't realise that's what it was. And I was like, oh, well, this is something that obviously needs to be addressed in the workplace. And so we created an article about how to address menopause in the workplace. And that was about a year ago. And I still get um, messages today from people on LinkedIn like, oh, this is a great article. It really resonated with me. And it was one of those topics that was, um, again, has enormous impact because obviously it affects such a huge part, part of the population. Yeah, it was very underreported and underinvestigated. So it helped us find that sweet spot there. And then the last tip that I'll share, which is um, my favorite one, is to simply survey your customers or your subscribers. So we have a company culture newsletter that we send out twice per month, which goes to prospects and customers. And every year we send out a survey to ask our customers, what are your pain points going into the next year? And recently we changed that to include a few more questions where we asked not only about the topics they want to learn about, and the pain points they have, but also what formats they want their content to be in. Um, We also ask them who they want to hear from, like who are the thought leaders that they want to get advice from. And we also had open-ended questions so we could get more nuanced answers and also maybe, you know, discover things that we hadn't put into our preset multiple choice questions because that, the other ones were multiple choice. And it was really enlightening when we did that exercise because we found that um, in terms of topic, by far and away the biggest topic that people wanted to hear about was employee retention followed by leadership. 
And so what we did is we created a webinar on which kind of combined those two topics together. It was called the, um, the leadership behaviors that drive employee retention. And that was our most attended. It was a webinar, but it was our most attended of any event we've done both online and in person. And since we've started um, using this consumer research to create the topics for our content, we've had a 632% increase in webinar registrations. That is Um, incredible. Like that is the data point that this works. And so that's, that's tremendous. I love that. Yeah, it was very successful for us. And the other things that we found out is that uh, a lot of our audience were kind of like a wearer of many hats. So a lot of HR teams, unless you're in a very large company, are kind of like a one person or two person team. And we found that they were using words like, I don't have enough time or like, I can't convince my leadership that culture matters. So we created a persona around this group, the wearer of many hats, like a quick guide on how to convince leadership that company culture is important. Um, And yeah, we wouldn't have known that if we hadn't done this uh, reader survey. And the other thing we found is that with format, the most popular format that people preferred to consume their content in was short video. And we weren't doing a lot in short video. Because I think it's one of those formats that people kind of shy away from unless you have like a dedicated video team. And we found that blog posts, which we were doing a lot of, was actually lower down the list. So it really helped us shift our strategy away from putting so much resources into formats that were, you know, maybe not as popular among our target audience. And then the last um, finding that we got from the survey that was really interesting was we asked them, who do you want to hear from? Do you want to hear from other thought leaders in HR? Do you want to hear from CEOs? And we also put in, um, do you want to hear from Great Place to Work staff? And Great Place to Work staff was the most um, popular. So we, it was very validating for us. We're like, okay, wow, like we are, our audience see us as thought leaders. And so we don't need to always go outside for experts. We can put our staff front and center. That was also a really great piece of insight we got from doing that survey. And I think all these insights are amazing. I mean, there's a lot to digest in just like the last 14 minutes of this podcast. And I think there's so, (laughs) so many things, but really to me, it sounds like you've embraced this idea of let's stop guessing what Mm. people want or their format. And let's just ask them, is that kind of the culture? Do you feel like that is something that's been shifting where it's just like, Hey, let's just, Let's go ask people what they want and what they need, and then let's provide it to them. Is that mm. kind of how the shift has happened? Yeah, definitely. I think I've I've always found like consumer behavior and what makes people tick really interesting. So I'm like known as the person that's always asking, "Oh, but why? Why do they care? Like, why? Why, why does our target audience care?" And so I think if you can keep asking those questions on like meetings and you know, if a brief comes your way, like let's, I think it's really important to bring it back to the the why, why do they care? Because it is very easy to kind of get set in your ways, make assumptions or think so much about what message do you want to put out rather than what does the, what is the message that the audience wants to receive? So yeah, I think, yeah, just keep reminding your teams and and show them the results, right? Like what I did with with these results is I put it together in a report and I distributed it throughout the whole, like basically the whole company. So not just marketing, but also we have another kind of content department and we also have, you know, our sales team, our customers for success. So it was also helpful for them because they then knew what talking points to come in with in their sales calls or even when they're doing their customer success sessions. So if you can get buy-in across the company, that can be really powerful. That's amazing. I love that. Mm. It's a great way to end the podcast today. Get to the why. Focus on Mm. the why. Ask people. Really dive into the research. And like you said, there's some incredible results that you've seen just by finding those hidden opportunities. And uh, I also love how you didn't just like say, great, we had a win. You shared that. And you carried that momentum internally 
so that everyone could build off of that, the sales and success teams and say, oh, great, these are subjects we can we can lead with that resonate, that are really impactful. So I think it's so great that you've kind of addressed all your different audiences in the process as well. So I love it. Claire, these episodes go by so fast. This has been amazing. If anyone wants to reach out, connect with you and further the conversation online, where do they go? Where can they find you? Yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn. Claire Hastwell, great place to work. Um, yeah, I always love collaborating and um, talking with other people in content marketing or in co company culture space. Um, so yeah, find me on LinkedIn. I love it. Again, Claire, thanks for the insights and your time today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to the Content Amplified Podcast. Please subscribe and leave us a review. And for additional ways to get more out of your content, visit our website at getmasset.com. That's getmasset.com. And tune in next time to the Content Amplified Podcast.